What's going on my friends? This is Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today I'm going to talk about everything that I did to prepare for my master electrician exam and how I passed it my first time. All right, so what you see before me is all of the physical pieces of paper that I studied and made and read and went through for an entire year before going in and taking my test. That may seem super overwhelming. <laughs> Any of you right now that are like studying and trying to pass your test, what I did is I studied for a year. And I knew that when I took that test, it was gonna be the hardest test out of all of them. But I wanted to make sure that I passed it the first go around. I didn't want to have to go take it four different times and see what was on it and then maybe try again and then fail and try again and fail and keep doing that. I wanted to be sure that I knew what I was doing. And so I got a hold of everything that I could have. So to start out, first thing that I did is I got a hold of this DeWalt licensing test. Um, this thing, I mean, this was 2011, so this was a while ago. Um, but there's a whole bunch of things. DeWalt comes, every time there's a new code cycle, they come out with um, a new one of these. And it's got every kind of electrician practice exam in here, plus there's a final exam that you can take. Um, there's some suggested times and things in here, but it's pretty good for navigating the code book. So this is the first thing that I would study because it got me in my code book and digging through pages and trying to find things. Um, the master tests in here are a lot more obscure knowledge and there's a little bit more calculations. So that helped me just start to go through the motions and practice. Um, next thing that I did was I got a hold of a bunch of Mike Holtz books um, because they're diagram heavy and I'm a visual learner. So I got the electrical exam prep book. Um, I got grounding and bonding, which I didn't really study too much grounding and bonding for the exam. Um, it was more just for my own sake of wanting to know. Um, then I got understanding the national electrical code uh, volumes one, sorry, too much shit in my hand, volume one and volume two, um, basically breaks down the entire code, has a little bit of commentary in there. It's like buying another code book put together, <laughs> but with some commentary and with some pictures. Um, there's a handbook too, like I've got right here, which is a hardcover NEC um, that I guess, oh, everything's gonna fall. This should be in the pile too, um, because I went through and highlighted and did a bunch of stuff and there's all these like extra notes and things that aren't in your code book. So it's extra information that helps you study. So throughout the year, I was constantly using this and I was referencing back and forth when I would come across something that I didn't really understand or that I didn't know why, I didn't want to just try to find answers. I wanted to really understand this stuff in depth and know what was what and why things were the way that they were. So if I found something in here and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense, I would go over the handbook and be like, oh, there's a whole explanation, like dope, that's why they did that. So those are some of the things that I used on a pretty constant basis. It took me a while to get through both of these because I was going through like page by page, literally reading every single code article, highlighting in here, writing notes. Um, I kept a uh, binder right here uh, full of notes. So every time I would read something and I write itty bitty, <laughs> I would come up with practice questions. I would replicate things that were in those books but I would change the numbers a little bit and I would follow the same math and I would just kind of regurgitate the problem solving and I would come up with my own questions. So I came up with hundreds, hundreds of practice questions that I did myself and I, you know, I double checked everything and, and double checked the math on them at least, but it was just running through equations, running through math, running through, um, you know, services and, and things like that. A lot of code articles. I even had a stack, a huge stack of note cards, which I, they're not on here because I don't know what I did with them, but I would put uh, actual code articles on here, you know, like have like 430.250, and then I'd flip it over and try to see like, oh, that's an FLC chart for, you know, like three phase, single phase, I don't even know, I don't remember it anymore. Um, I know it's an FLC chart, I just don't remember if 250 or 247 or 248 was like the three phase, single phase, DC, whatever, it doesn't matter. The point of code is not to memorize everything, but I wanted to memorize at least the layout of the code so that when I'm trying to find information on this timed test, 
like, okay, I know that that's not grounding and bonding. So it's not going to be anywhere near 250. You know, it's pool stuff. So I know it's going to be in the 600s at least. I was kind of making myself a map in my head. Um, so the note cards were helping me so that I could just flip through and, and remember the, the where everything was. Um, another thing that I did, and a lot of these questions in here, stuff that I hand wrote up, uh, I got from these magazines too. So these are all <laughs> years worth of ECNM magazine. So I even have the old school logo back when it was actually a cool logo. I don't know, Mike Holt, your whole guy, your, your team, what you're doing with this, like this new logo, it just looks cheesy, man. Sorry. It's always good information, not knocking the information, but like this logo was awesome. It was like technician kind of font and it made me feel like I was learning something. There's colors and it just seemed really technical and cool. This seems like you're trying to convert to LEDs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. That's just my opinion. Go back to the old style or like maybe I'll design you a logo. I don't know. I do a lot of design stuff. If you want a new logo. Oh, <laughs> uh, anyways, um, great information though. So in ECNM, I think this is the best magazine out in the industry. There's electrical contractor in here too, but that's really more like people magazine for electricians. <laughs> it's not a lot of useful stuff. It's like articles of, of like what new LED lights are going in the industrial environments today. And you know, like this is like pictures of what's going on in code right now. And are you stumped by the code? Like, do you want to know more? So there's a lot of material stuff, you know, things in here that you don't really need to know. I would say 75% of this magazine is not a technical learning type of environment at all but the, the parts that are are like really really good so um they have in-depth write-ups a lot of them they have code articles in here that kind of break down a specific part of code and then a lot of times later on they have like what's wrong here it's usually near the back but it shows you a violation and then you can like write in and guess what you think the violation is and if you win you get you know i don't know like a subscription or something um, but it, you know, it's cool. It's a, it's a good way to study. So I would do this all the time and I would copy and print and I started printing like whole sections. Like I've got them in here, uh, just one after the other, everything that I thought that I needed to know. So like standard method and optional method for calculating services for residences. Um, you know, and then I would write down all the different steps and I just, I was creating learning manuals for myself based off of how I learn. So it's really hard for me just to take in a whole bunch of information and then try to retain any of it. I actually have to rewrite things and like, you know, I have to, when you use, when you write something down, you actually use a different part of your brain than you do when you think. This is why journaling is such an important thing. If you're like in therapy or whatever, they tell you to write things down because you're engaging your optical nerve, your optic nerve, and you're engaging the back part of your brain. So you're actually writing something down, which is, uh, is kind of locking information in a different part of your brain than the standard part of your brain, like frontal lobe that would just kind of regurgitate information and, and hold on to some and lose some. So anyways, that was my methodology. I wanted to be like reading things, writing things, and like committing all of it as much as I could to process, not necessarily to memory. Um, I wanted to have kind of muscle memory of going through a lot of these things. So when test time came, I was fast at doing a lot of them. I knew that all the information, a lot of the weird obscure references and the weird parts of code that I'd never come across, I knew there was going to be tons of that on the code book. So like, it's impossible to go in there really prepared. You just have to know how to find things, know where things are, practice doing all the calculations, practice trying to find information so much that when the test comes, you're like, I know where this is. I know where I can find, ah, shoot. I might not be able to find that one. So I'm going to skip it for now. Cause that's a time waster Go on to the next one. Boom, boom. And you just want to be able to fly through the test like that. So those are some of the things that I went through. Um, I also, when I was, um, well, I kind of have always done this, but like when I was starting out and I was going to get my journeyman's license, um, I would create diagrams. Like I would take the equipment grounding conductor table, which was table 250.122. Um, I took circular mill chart, grounding electrode conductor chart, put some like voltage drop calculations, KVA stuff, conduit fill, and I just kind of like made visual references for myself. So when I was out in the field, I didn't have to go through all of that. It was like all the pertinent information that I needed right here. Um, 
in, you know, like strapping for pipes and stuff like that. But then when I would come across manuals, like I've got relays and contactors that came with manuals, wiring diagrams, I've got like emergency ballasts and stuff that I would run into over and over and over that just showed you the different wiring configuration based off of what kind of ballast you have. Um, but I saved a lot of information. And I went and took a journeyman's test at, or a journeyman course at the IEC. Um, and they had a manual that they, you know, put together and it was kind of like this, but, uh, practice tests, a lot of information and handouts and stuff. Then I had another guy that was a journeyman that I knew, Gary Jackson, shout out to Gary. Um, he gave me his study material from a completely different school that he went to when he was studying for his journeyman license. So I went through all of his stuff too, and kind of cherry picked, took the best stuff. Um, any of you that, I don't know if, where you're at in the country or if you think about who you're getting training from. Stall Cups is a good uh, resource for training. The Neats Manuals, N-E-E-T-S, I've got every single one of them. It's the Naval, um, Naval Electrical Electronics. I don't know, something. Navy made it, it's called Neats. It's pretty neat. <laughs> How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Uh, but there's, it's really comp it, uh, complex and comprehensive, and so it's another great thing to read if you're trying to study, but it's not really necessarily going to help you code-wise. So that's the other thing. It's okay if you want to sit and read all these, like, electrical courses for apprentices and, you know, electric motors and, and all of these other cool things, but that's not going to help you take your master exam. That's just all extra knowledge that you should just thirst for and you know because you love your job and you want to do it but what you need is like even wayne robinson he's got some great manuals uh his son mike so wayne and mike robinson um, but they come up like you know this is a transformer disconnect and it has some calculations in here and like charts and tables and it really just explains how transformers work and and you know like how to size conductors and stuff like that so they've got some great training too mike holt's got some great training um Paul Abernathy has a really good podcast, Master of the NEC. Um, he also has a lot of really good diagrams that he draws up that kind of show you um, little bits of information. And so if you're on LinkedIn or Facebook, you can see a lot of his diagrams. Um, his Facebook group's great too. So he he just he spends a lot of time training people and he knows the code very well. He's actually on code making panels, which a lot of the people that come up with these publications actually are or were at some point on the code making panel. Um, but I like Paul's podcast because that was something that I was listening to, to just try to like get extra little drops of information, you know, while I was driving in my truck or whatever. And if you don't retain all of it and you can't pull your code book out and sit there and listen to him, like he tells you to, you're still at least hearing information and it's like, oh wow, I had no idea. So it's re really the answer is submerge yourself in code for a year. And uh, you may not even have to do it for a year. That's just what I did. I, I'm, I'm divorced now. <laughs> but I even went on my honeymoon. <laughs> this is how ambitious I am. I'm the most ambitious person I know. Uh, but on my honeymoon, I was studying for my master electrician's license. Um, it meant that much to me. It meant that much to me. I'm passionate about this stuff. I love it. I still don't consider myself a code guru. I just don't care that much, really, like to sit and talk about table 250.122, the grounding electric, like, oh Jesus, it just bores the shit out of me. But I have to know code and I have to at least be able to be familiar enough with the book to flip through it and find anything that I need on jobs. So there's still, you know, I fail inspections every once in a while because I forgot something or like, you know, I'll do something a certain way and then I'll find out in code like, oh shit, I missed that. Like I was supposed to do this and so I have to go back and change it. You're never going to know everything. And if you do know everything, you belong on the code making panel. Really, you should be out there creating code and, and probably trying to teach people code. Um, I just don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's not me. I like to wear tools. I like to do stuff. I like to train out in the field and like shoot the shit with the guys. I'm a field guy. Like y'all are field guys. I'm not a suit and tie sitting in front of a damn camera talking about code articles and you know, stuff like that. So anyways, that's just to say I was able to do it. I studied for a year, regurgitated a lot of information every single day. Didn't matter for a year, every day, even if I could only put like 10, 15 minutes in, I would crack something open and be doing something. But for a year I studied and uh, went in and I don't even remember what I got. Um, it wasn't like near failing. It was probably a B somewhere, you know, in the 80s. 
Um, but that's it. So let me know if you guys have any other questions. If you want some some of these resources, like I can't just give out people's resources. I'm pretty sure Mike Holt would be pissed if I like, started printing pages and putting this shit up. But if you go to my book section on my website, electricianu.com forward slash books, you can actually order a lot of this stuff. I've kind of put it all together um, into something that's that you can order and go on Amazon or whatever, but it at least keeps everything together. Um, I get a lot of these books too, like stuff that I like reading. There's stuff about Tesla and motor controls and um, how electric motors work and stuff like that. Just books that I've read throughout my time doing this that I think are quality and I think that are worthwhile for y'all to buy if you're just a nerd and you like to know what the difference between a series wound and a shunt wound motor is, whatever. Um, so love you crazy people. Let me know if you got any other questions in the comments below. Um, please like and subscribe to this stuff. Uh, it really, really helps me out. Hit that little notification bell so you can find out every time I have a new episode out. And the best part of all of this is that you can go to electricianu.com forward slash practice hyphen exams. And I've got three exams on there. You can take your residential wireman, journeyman, and master electrician exams. They're timed tests. So you sit on a screen in a test environment, just like you would for your state exam. So you can get practice doing this. So if you're interested in doing that, check it out again, electricianu.com forward slash practice hyphen exams link in the description below. There's also like merch out there if you guys want, you know, shirts and mugs and masks and notebooks and stuff like that. So love you crazy people. Thank you so much. And I will see you in the next one.